everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to share with you today one more video from my uh, big summer trip, uh, making our way back home and coming up through Utah. Uh, after we left Dead Horse Point, we rode up to a town called Price, Utah, and stayed the night there. And then our next day was going to be to run up to Logan, which we planned on about a 305 mile day, which as many of you know, that's about the most I plan for in a day because of injuries from my crash. I don't like to push it much beyond 300 miles if I don't have to. Now, if you look at a map, it's not 300 miles from Price to Logan, but the way we were going, it was. And it's not because we were taking the straight road up. Why would we do that? That's just boring. No, what we wanted to do was ride through Nine Mile Canyon. Is actually 45 miles long and it runs along the book cliffs. Now the book cliffs themselves run about 200 miles from Price Canyon all the way into Colorado but the main part of the road we wanted to stay on and pretty much the most direct route through the canyon was about 45 miles. The paved road's great. It is a wonderful ride. We headed kind of more or less east out of uh, Price and through the town of Wellington onto Nine Mile Canyon Road. There's a few farms and, and things out there, but after a while, it kind of just turns to open land and range.
This is being called the world's longest art gallery because of all the carvings and the petroglyphs and all that along the way, which many are off the beaten path and you have to hike in to get them. But some of these petroglyphs and that date back a thousand years. So once we turned on Nine Mile Canyon Road, we tootled up about you know, 25 miles or so. And we came to a junction in the road. One was to make a left turn into Gate Canyon. The other was to keep going straight. Now, both these roads, the one that turns left and the one that goes straight, are still named Nine Mile Canyon Road. We knew from looking at the maps and doing my research that if we had kept going straight, that road turns to dirt about five miles further up. And we wanted to go further north anyway. So we turned the Gate Canyon and about a half mile later, pavement ends. I was, let's just say less than overjoyed. We turned around and went back to the turnout at the junction and there was kind of this big gravel lot there and I dug out the maps again. And it just so happened that there were uh, a couple of uh, construction teams hauling a big old D9 cat up that way and they were headed up into Gate Canyon. So we asked them what the road was like, how bad was it, everything else. He said, it really not terrible. Um, it's packed, it's some loose dirt and gravel in the, in the way, but it's mostly packed because surprisingly, it's pretty well traveled for as remote as it is. And it goes for about six miles before hitting the pavement again. We decided to go ahead and go for it because otherwise we would have had to have gone about 40 miles back into Price and then make our way back up to Logan from there. We thought, well, 40 miles detour or six miles of not a lot of fun. So we opted for the six miles and it really wasn't terrible. Now I've never ridden the Moki Dugway, um, which a lot of people have. And from all reports, this road was very similar to it. Our bikes weren't super skittish on it. We didn't have to crawl along. I mean, we kept our speed down obviously, but it really wasn't terrible. It wasn't as bad as we had uh, planned on. And once we got back to the paved road, it was another great section of highway.
So the next leg of our trip was going to take us up Utah 39 for roughly 17, 18 miles. And then we had to turn left onto Ant Flat Road. Obviously, I didn't do my research as well as I thought because once we got to Ant Flat Road, which was not marked, we discovered that this was not paved, not even close to being paved. This was loose gravel, not packed down, big chunks of rock. There were a lot of people there with their horses and their ATVs and their Jeeps and things like that that were going up into the back country off of there because there's a lot of areas up there you can go play. And so we asked a few of them what the road was like, how far was it before we hit pavement again, and a couple of them said, oh, you'll hit pavement five or six miles. The problem was we would have had to go back the way we came and then pick up another highway to go north into Logan. Or we could have kept going on Utah 39 and gone up and around by Bear Lake and come back down in. Either way, it was going to be about a 76-mile detour. Now, keep in mind, we were already pushing 300 miles for the day, and we didn't feel like making it a 400-mile day. So we looked at each other and said, fuck it, let's go. took us about an hour and a half to run Ant Flat Road, and we didn't hit pavement for 17 miles. It was brutal. Now, I've never been a dirt bike rider. I've learned to ride on street bikes. I've ridden street bikes all my life. So that obviously had me at some kind of a disadvantage. But the other thing that had me at disadvantage, and Craig too, is that we're on street bikes. He rides a Stratoliner. I ride a Road King. And our tires and our suspensions are not built for roads like that. Once we got back onto paved road, it was a beautiful ride into Logan. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this trip. It was a blast. I just want to remind you with uh, the holidays coming up, don't forget my books, Life Behind Bars, The Long Road Home, available pretty much wherever books are sold. They make great gifts, great stocking stuffers. If you can't ride because of all the snow on the ground, read about it. Anyway, if you like what you see here, please hit that subscribe button. And remember, keep your knees in the breeze, and hopefully I'll see you on the road.